Hi, this is Mrs. Bettis, and I'm going to read a book to you called Trombone Shorty. Trombone Shorty is by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews and illustrated by Caldecott Honor winner Brian Collier. So, um, the first thing I want you to notice is that, yes, it has uh, a couple of different awards, the Caldecott Awards, on there, which is pretty awesome and just kind of look at that cover and here's the back as it continues um, and if you hear in the background um, some music i hope you do um, that is trombone shorty himself as he has some CDs. So, uh, I thought it would be great to, while reading the book, to listen to him at the same time. So let's get started. Where yet? Where yet? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans, and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So where yet? Lots of kids will have nicknames. But I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning. Because this is a story about music. But, before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme, and the, any time of the day or night, you could hear music floating in the air. And there was music in my house, too. My big brother James played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I loved the brass bands with their own trumpets and trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where yet? Where yet? The musicians would call. All day long, I could see the brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all those sounds and mixed them together, just like how we made our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. We call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music, that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that I looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play.
The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and I headed out to the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone shorty, he called out because the instrument was twice my size. Where are you at? From that day on, everyone called me Trombone Shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hands. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and biggest music festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As I watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of the song and asked the crowd, Who's playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, That's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me overhead till I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone up high in the air, ready to blow. What do you want me to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together. We called ourselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in the band was, he would proudly say, That's my little brother, Trombone Shorty. Where ya? And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty in New Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I've played all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, just like my brother did for me. Today I played at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival where I once played with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. I still keep my trombone in my hands, and I will never let it go. Where ya? Where ya? And here is a picture of the musician himself. Thanks for listening.